Yup. Happy Saturday. Welcome to the Paradigm Shift, episode 63. Wow. Commitment, consistency, the persistent pursuit, as our iconic partner in crime, Dave Meltzer, likes to say. That I just call him Dave Meltzer, and by Dave Meltzer, clearly, I mean the quantum quail, the blessed bat, uh, the sex octopus, the applesauce, adorable applesauce, scarfing down OG. Oh, there he is. Look at him. Oh, my goodness. Coming in hot. Uh, handsome sandwiches off the charts. We got a very special guest coming on, which I'm really excited about. Uh, we're gonna bring you on in less than five, Ken. In the meantime, we're gonna bring on Big Dave right now, also known as the Sex 62nd Man. Uh, but don't ask me why. Handsome, this cat looks in about one minute. Uh, it's gonna be a dead giveaway. <laughs> I love you. Hi. Hi, Dave. Hello. What's going on, brother? Really good. Got back from Texas literally an hour ago on about zero sleep. But who am I to complain? You do this all the time, and, and no one's better at it than you. Ah, very good, man. I saw my boy Ed Milet, uh rocking the hundreds uh, for the hardcore closer himself. Uh, so it was good, good to see him there. Yeah. How's everything by you? I couldn't imagine a better life. That's all I got to say. Yeah? Yeah. So I got to... Got my daughter's graduation from high school, my daughter's 18th birthday, my other daughter's 21st birthday. I have my son's uh, district championship. He won the last tournament of champions, and today's the first day of that. And uh, already done a couple workouts, been with my wife, and it's only 9.02 a.m. here in Southern California. Unbelievable. You, my friend, know how to collapse time better than anybody I know. It's very special. It's bending time, utilizing the speed of thought. <laughs> to reconcile it with the speed of light. Anyway, Devin Denofa is in the house. Portia Keaton, all the peeps coming in. Thank you so much for joining us at a special edition. At a special edition. So we're excited. That's right. And real quick, before we get started, how much adorable applesauce did you scarf down today? You know, that's a, I have a steady diet of adorable applesauce and uh, trying to be the best and cutest that I can be for you, my friend. And it's a difficult job, but somebody has to do it. And uh, I've been scarfing down at least about a half a pint of adorable applesauce. Yeah, rumor has it on the street, you've also been scarfing down some pretty pastrami. Is that accurate? <laughs> pretty. You know what? I like uh, really <laughs> the, uh, the corn, the, what, what can we say? The, uh, the, 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 oh, shoot. How about the, I don't even know what's uh, the conscious corned beef. That's what I like better than the, the pretty pastrami. Oh, right, let's do this. Let's start by right. him. We're going to. This special guest, I'm excited. You ready for me? Yeah, I'm ready, man. Okay. Uh, control over your mindset. You were talking about this this week, something that everybody can relate to in some capacity. At the end of the day, you give meaning to what you see, not the other way around, right? Absolutely. So, you know, we have control of not only our mindset, giving meaning to what we see, but the heart set of how we feel about what we see and the meaning that we give it and how we feel about that meaning that we give it. And then that's what effectuates the handset of what are we going to do with the activity that we've been given today, the 24 hours today, the 1440 minutes today? What are we going to do with it according to that which we have control of, our mindset, our heart set? which effectuates the handset and allows us to be more productive, accessible, and gracious with our time, allowing us to make more money, help more people, and have more fun. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. I love it. I wanted to just ask you this selfishly, uh, call it a mini coaching session real quick before we bring on our guest. I think it's scientifically proven that negative thoughts can actually make you sick. So I, I want to ask you the question, do you believe that positive thoughts can actually make you well? Yeah, so look, I, I don't like to talk about sickness in general. I like to talk about ease and dis-ease. And so I think it becomes more apparent that negative thoughts would put us at dis-ease. Dis-ease creates cortisol, which creates inflammation. And the physicality of inflammation causes us to, as they define it, be quote-unquote sick. But positive thoughts obviously put us at ease. Uh, and this is proven by the fact that we uh, get the gift of dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins that reduces inflammation, that puts us at ease. Uh, the more at ease we are, the greater the flow, the greater we can clear the interference or the dis-ease between us and our potential, our source, the greatest source of power, omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing, omnipresent source 
that allows us to be our best, allows us to pursue our potential with efficiency, effectiveness, and statistical success. So it's really simple in my mind. If you have control of your mindset, your heart set, and your hand set, and you have a choice to be positive or negative, why would you create dis-ease when you can go ahead and clear the interference and create ease in your life? I love you so much that it's concerning. <laughs> nice, I love it. Yeah, well, I guess right now, uh, for anybody that, that wants to know about next week, you've got a big situation going on, uh, the very exciting launch party for Office Hours Season 2. Uh, if people wanted to get involved, Dave, how can they? Yeah, if they could just email me, I, I'll put them your guests uh, on our VIP list with you. Uh, but, you know, we have the biggest billionaires, millionaires, and entrepreneurs, celebrities, athletes, and entertainers on Office Hours, uh, which is in Season 2, uh, moving from Amazon Prime Video to Apple TV with my Apple TV deal. Uh, but we're going to have extraordinary guests, uh, great content, all for a charitable cause. We're going to be supporting the Unstoppable Foundation, which I'm the chairman of. Uh, so come out. It's Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, June 8th, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. So easy to get to right by the airport in Orange County at our David Meltzer Studios there in Orange County. Come join us. All you got to do is email me, david at dmeltzer.com, and I'll put you on Craig Siegel's VIP list. So go ahead, email me, david at dmeltzer.com. Done. Love it. Love you. Congratulations on all the success and all the cool stuff going on. I'm going to bring in our guests right now. Also, I just want to say it's, it's been a hell of a lot of fun co-hosting all this hours with you. Thank you for having me. Oh, dude, we're going to do more together and put, we're going to put the paradigm shift on uh, Apple TV. We're working on it. Hell yeah. But what, when I said office hours, I meant this last week on LinkedIn. Oh, I know. Yeah, that's I, I know what you mean. Hey, hey, look who's here. There he is. Talk about a handsome sandwiching. What's up, Ken? How are you? <laughs> Good morning, guys. I feel like I'm interrupting a bromance here. Yeah, for sure. This guy, uh, we, we've been in love for, what, 63 episodes or so? Wow. <laughs> right. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I'm, I'm a big fan. I know you could be anywhere today on a Saturday, but, but I'm excited. Where are you calling in from? Where are you? Uh, suburb of Nashville, Tennessee, the greatest place in America, Franklin, Tennessee. Nice. Very nice. Cool. Yeah. So, and for the audience, listen, guys, if you're not familiar with Ken, my suggestion, go right over to his stuff, check out his Instagram, his website, uh, and, and do a deep dive. He's got some awesome stuff going on. I think what's most valuable today, right now, is just an unbelievable conversation. Uh, and, and one thing that I saw you talking about this weekend, because I was doing some homework also because I'm a fan, and, and, and you were talking about like getting in the right rooms and like putting yourself in the right situations, and even in circumstances, working for free, just to get contacts, make connections, and just put yourself in there. How important is that for people that are looking to try to step into something new and really broaden their horizons? Well, it's a great question, and we need to set context because you start talking about working for free in our woke uh, snowflake society, people come after me really quick. So let's set the context of what I mean when I say work for free. I don't mean 40 hours a week where you can't sustain livelihood, folks. Come on. What I'm saying is, is if you have a day job and you are sustaining uh, what you need for livelihood and you're looking to break into a new sector. And this comes from my personal experience. At the age of 31, I did a complete life shift and I was moving from the private sector world where I was vice president for Maxwell, John Maxwell, leadership guru. And I was going to move into broadcasting with no degree and very little contacts and zero broadcasting experience. And when you think about shifting into a world like that, or let's say you're going from your day job to you want to start a side hustle that will eventually become your dream uh, entrepreneur situation, this idea of working for free is a mindset. I heard you guys talking just moments ago. How can I get in and get some experience, develop some skill, and make connections? Well, the best way to do that many times is to offer yourself for free, volunteering, shadowing people. I'll give you a classic example. I had a day job, three kids, a wife, mortgage, the whole nine yards in Atlanta, and I wanted to break in. And I knew that as a, uh, and again, I had, I was self-employed, but I knew that I could give a couple of hours a week to getting in. And so I walked in off the street to the largest sports radio station in Atlanta, still there, 680 The Fan, and said, look, I got into a meeting with the program director said, I don't want any money. I just want to volunteer, shadow. I'll stay out of the way. How can I add value to you guys? 
and the guy looked at me like I had horns growing out of my head. And then he was like, okay, this, this makes sense. He doesn't look like an ax murderer. He's not asking me for anything. He's offering to add value. And it was that that got me in the industry. And I began to make connections and relationships. And I got myself on the air uh, in a number eight radio market. So when I say work for free, look for opportunities to volunteer, look for opportunities to shadow and to add value. We're only talking about a small amount of your time. But what is going to happen is this. I'll review this. You're going to get the opportunity to develop some skill. You're going to get the opportunity to get some experience. And most importantly, you're going to make connections that may serve you in ways that you could never dream of down the road. And my story certainly, uh, you know, really illustrates that. So that's what I mean when I say look for opportunities to work for free. Thank you for giving context to it. Yeah, 100%. Dave, what's on your mind? Oh, well, just so impressed uh, and agree with Ken. You know, the way that I articulate that, I see Ken Jocelyn here as well. What's up, brother? I'm sure you're friends with him being there in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, look, there's just activities. And so the way that I stay out of the misperception or miscommunication, when people talk about working for free, they immediately create a resistance to work. Look, you're given 24 hours a day of activity, activity you get paid for and activity you don't get paid for. There's no sacrifice in volunteering in any activity. Uh, it's an investment. And I think a lot of people, when whether you have three kids or you know, wh wherever you are and whatever you're doing, if you can put a mindset or perspective or a meaning into activity, an activity that you get paid for, activity you don't get paid for, with three different lenses involved, which your story definitely portrays eloquently, right? We have the productivity side of it. Which value can I provide? We have accessibility. Who am I making myself accessible to? And what am I accessing out of it? What am I learning from my investment that I've made? And then of course, one of the hardest and most difficult things that people can't grasp, which is why they have attacking thoughts or judgments or conditions. When someone says, hey, you gotta work for free uh, in the woke generation, as you would call it, is that they haven't been able to reconcile gratitude. Uh, and yeah. when I say reconcile gratitude, that there is uh, light, love, and lessons in all experiences and all activity. And if you can prioritize your time, like you have done, and Craig, you have done, as you shifted from Wall Street as well, if you can reconcile time, is this a priority? Is this something that's worth finding the light, the love, and the lessons at the fan in Atlanta? or starting a podcast or speaking or writing a book or coaching or whatever else thousands of people hit me up to do and whether or not they can reconcile time. And in order to prioritize, you got to know what you want, who you can help and who can help you and how best to get it done with these three lenses. Then you'll be able to prioritize. But I think, you know, putting a, a two, two meanings, one in activity called work, no such thing. And then the other, of the activity called sacrifice, which so many people do when they quote unquote, intern, volunteer, extern, whatever it is, they look at that as a sacrifice. I see all activity as an investment in myself and in others and utilizing the what, the who, the how, prioritizing with that reconciliation of time allows us all to expand and grow and accelerate. And I think we can reduce the amount of resistance and attacks that you know the middle-aged white uh, mutant turtles uh, get by actually trying to articulate, hey, look, we're just trying to empower you to be better, to pursue your potential, to make more money, help more people, and have more fun. Dave's got nuggets. I just want to take a second to say I'm so grateful to be here with both of you today. This just got really juicy really quick. I, I think it's so valuable for the audience, and, and it's so true. If you're moving towards something that you desire, uh, it's not a sacrifice. It's an investment, and I think a lot of people need to Uh, moving along, one thing that I can say that it was really cool for me is because I know what it feels like to be burnt out at a JOB. I was a business owner a few years back. I wasn't happy. And like, for example, now I just got back from Texas this morning. I literally didn't sleep for 24 hours. I'm a little tired, but there's a big difference between after a long work day being tired and being depleted and diminished, right? Uh, and, and that was something I was back in the day. Now I'm not. And for anybody out there that's possibly looking to make a career pivot or wondering if what they're doing is for them, there's a fine line between being tired and being depleted, right, Ken? 
There absolutely is. And, and if you want to figure out, A, what it is that would give me the juice versus drain me, um, I have a three-part methodology that is based on the uniqueness of who we are as human beings. And I'll just break it down very briefly because this is, number one, how we figure out why I am depleted. And then this is how we figure out how to never be burned out because you can actually be in a situation where you are physically tired like you are, but instead of being exhausted, you're exhilarated. All right. And so I'm going to unpack that. So all of us have talent. These are just God given talents, maybe of a technical nature that they call hard skills in the world at work or soft skills, which are simply people skills. So we all come into this world with a ball of talent, like a ball of clay. And over time, through discovery and experience and testing, we can begin to shape that clay like a potter does into a fine-tuned instrument that has tremendous value. So talent is, think of talent as my starting place, as the clues here. Because talent uh, that turns into skill becomes a, like a power tool. Okay. And I mean, we're talking about maximum efficiency and performance. So talent is the tool. Now, the second element that we all have is what I define as passion. Now, you got to be very careful because in our world, there are a lot of people on Instagram going, don't follow your passion. And they're misguiding people. So let me define what passion is. Passion is a deep rooted love of a type of task or work. You do it, Craig. David, you do it. I mean, we light up when we're thinking and developing content, when we're coaching people, when we're developing business ideas. It doesn't matter how tired we are, our eyes will light up. And so the reason I use the word passion to define work we love, because everybody has a type of work they love. Here's why I use the word passion. The root word for passion in the Latin is pati. P-A-T-I. And what it actually means in the true use of the word passion uh, before it became romantic in nature or enthusiastic in nature is to suffer, to suffer. If you're willing to suffer, and I love what David said earlier about this idea of volunteering or putting in the reps. It's not about sacrifice. It's about investment. And that's the mindset here of passion. It means I'm willing to suffer. Watch this, folks. I'm willing to suffer Patience? Isn't patience awful? Patience is a form of suffering because we get up and we go after it as humans and we desire progress. And when that progress doesn't turn into the results we want right away, it requires what I believe is the secret sauce of successful people, patience. The tension between getting up and going after it, but also going after it and staying with it and showing up and showing up and showing up and showing up until that result happens. So passion means I love this work no matter if I'm getting paid for it or I'm getting recognized for it or not. I love this type of work. Uh, the third element is now what I call mission. Because all of us enter this world hardwired to contribute to other people. It's really fascinating. You know, I think of, I think of the human nature and I think of the human condition and I think as a parent of three teens now you know any parent watching this or any human knows that you don't have to teach a kid how to say no it's just one day they come upon it and they go no and you didn't have to teach them what it meant or how to say it you know there's one other thing that I know we don't have to teach anybody no matter where they are on the planet and that is to wonder in the quietness of the moment in their soul why am I here? What should I do in my life? You don't have to teach anybody to wonder that. And so that speaks to this last element that we all have. I call mission, but it is a desire to contribute to the world. Something. To contribute to others. This is the beauty of the human spirit, that we just long to make a difference. So you look at the three elements. Talent's what I do best. Passion is work that I really love doing. And then mission is the results or result that I deeply care about producing. So when you put all three together, I use what I do best, talent, to do work I love, passion, to produce results that matter to me, mission. When those are in alignment, by the way, that becomes a job description. We created an assessment called the Get Clear Career Assessment that measures those three things. Because I don't believe talent is enough. I don't believe passion is enough. 
And I don't believe mission is enough. I believe all three must be in alignment. And this is when people look at you and say things like, wow, you were born for this, Craig. Uh, look at Meltzer, man. This dude, he's just in his zone. You know, like that's what people say about people that are on purpose. And so coming back to your question, because this is really the root of how do I avoid burnout? Well, I'm just going to tell you something. If you're in a job that allows you to spend about three fourths of your day using what you do best, doing work you love, producing results that matter deeply to you. I'm gonna tell you something, you will never be exhausted. And I work my freaking butt off. Many days I'll broadcast for five hours straight. And before that, I'm, I'm, I'm in meetings, I'm writing content. I develop content fresh every day. And then I coach people live on the air. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, I'm mentally fried. On the way home, I'm like, you know what I mean? And I'm going to go home and be dad to three teens and a husband to Stacy and, and then a dad dog, you know, to uh, Ellis and Huey. Um, but let me explain something. I'm exhilarated, though. I, I, I'm tired, but I'm not exhausted and burned out. And what happens is, is I come home, I take my work hat off, and now I'm husband, dad, dog, dad, human being, and I recharge my batteries with good sleep, good eating, just checking out. And then the next day, guys, my battery is juiced again. There's no burnout. But if you are burned out, go to one of those three areas, all three, and do an assessment. Take the Get Clear assessment at KenColeman.com. Just sit there and get alone with pencil and paper and go, wait a second. Am I spending most of my day using my talent? Am I spending most of my day doing work that really fires me up? Am I spending most of my day creating results that I care deeply about? And so that's how we, A, figure out why we're burned out, and B, avoid it. This is gripping stuff. Dave, is, is Big Ken on a frequency or what? Yeah, man, he gets it. And uh, let me utilize a different vernacular in order to... Uh, see what I see when you're talking about burnout. Number one, if we can get people to shift the paradigm, talking about enthusiasm, uh, the root of enthusiasm is in Theos, uh, in Theos with God. And I know Ken Johnson is there, so he'll like my faith-based speeches of what we're connected to and through and shifting a paradigm to uh, people will always say, we were just talking, Craig, about being efficient, effective, and statistically successful. Well, the energy level that I have at 54 is greater than I had at 44, 34, or even 24. And the reason is, is I've learned to clear the interference between me and that in Theos and that energy and that understanding of that. Skills and knowledge only determine your basement. The skills that you have, the knowledge of what you know and who you know will only determine your basement. And we see this a lot in athletics. Obviously, uh, Ken being a sports announcer as well understands that Ryan Leaf's basement in football was far higher than my potential, uh, but it's my desire that determines my potential utilizing the skills and knowledge that I have in its own particular space. Patience is so difficult because of time. If we understood and had infinite patience, everything would happen instantly. I'm gonna repeat that. If you could learn to have infinite patience, which I wish I could, I don't, but if you had infinite patience, everything would happen instantly. And that's a true understanding of how entheos or enthusiasm works, because when we shift our mindset in our heart set and our hand set to one of that, I'm connected to an omniscient, all powerful, all knowing source, an omnipresent source, uh, then what am I doing to interfere with it? So traveling all night may interfere with that connectivity, that, that energy. That's why, you know, Craig, when you're saying, you know, you're physically exhausted, I was saying, hey, man, I'm your coach. Come to me, I'll teach you how to clear that interference that you could travel all day and all night because I imagine you went on an airplane and if someone's not teaching you the right way to utilize light, temperature, and positioning on an airplane in order to effectuate recovery as well as access, then you're missing out on an opportunity to have yourself physically recover and access more in theos, enthusiasm, to take that energy that you're already connected to and through. All three of us in just our pinky, as Bob Proctor used to say, have enough power to light up all of Manhattan. There's no doubt we're interfering with it. And what I think I hear Ken saying is, hey, everyone, look, 
you're happy, healthy, wealthy, and worthy already. What are you doing to interfere with it? Utilize your skills, your knowledge, and your desire. Align it. Figure out what it's supplementary and synergistic to a passion that you may have. That suffering is the interference and be able to effectuate the power that all of us have been given and allow it to come through us to give it to other. Remember, very simply, you will receive that energy because of who you are. You will. You will receive it because of who you are. And you will be able to uh, utilize it because of what you're connected to it through. But you also be able to offer it to others uh, because you are a part of it all and utilizing that understanding of energy to shift your paradigm, not to go get more energy, but what are you doing to interfere uh, with that enthusiasm, that passion uh, that interferes uh, with that is a key component. So thanks for letting me to ramble and roll there for a minute. Thanks, Craig and Ken. I appreciate both of you guys. This was an awesome conversation. Guys, for our audience, that's not go check them out right now. Ken, what's the best way for the audience to support you, brother? Well, I just love for them to engage with us, obviously, here on Instagram, certainly KenColeman.com. The show is on SiriusXM Daily, The Ken Coleman Show. We spent a lot of time coming up with that name. Very creative. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, we're also on YouTube Live each day uh, and syndicated radio uh, and the podcast, of course. So engage with us. You know, if you are uh, someone who um, is very serious and you want purpose and meaning in your work, you want to max uh, your potential out, to make the contribution that you know you were put on this earth to make. Um, I'm, I'm your coach and uh, you can call in and we'll talk and change your name, your location. If you're in a sensitive stuck situation, we do a lot of that every day. Um, and I would just close by saying this, uh, you matter, you have what it takes. You are created to fill a unique role in this world. That means you are tremendously needed and valuable, but it also means you have to show up and do it. Because some in this world needs you to show up and be you. So uh, hold that closely on your heart today and uh, come out roaring and ready to go next week. That's what we call landing the plane, right, Big Dave? You got it, man. Surround yourself with the right people, the right ideas, and I'm absolutely in the right room with you and Ken. I simply just will add, be kind to your future self. Do good deeds. I appreciate everyone. Join us. If you'd like at the launch party on Wednesday, go ahead, reach out to us. We'd love to have you on Wednesday for Apple TV, TV launch. Looking forward to seeing you, Craig, and hopefully Ken can even join us all the way from Atlanta. Thank you, guys. I'd love to. Bye. Thank you for joining me. This was an awesome conversation. Both of you have a great day. We'll be back next Saturday for episode 64, Instagram, 30 Eastern, The Paradigm Shift. Love you guys. Have a great week. Have fun. Thanks, Ken. Appreciate you. Thanks, David. Thank you, Craig. Thank Take you, care, brother. brother. That was awesome. Great stuff. Unbelievable conversation. Wow. Just what the doctor ordered. That was valuable and universal and applicable for anybody going through anything. Uh, three wise cats. I definitely was not the smartest in the room, and that's okay. That's how I prefer it. I'm excited to check out some more Ken stuff and do some more with him. As always, Big Dave and I, every Saturday. Uh, and if you're not attending Big Dave's launch party um, in California next Wednesday, I believe it's the 8th for Office Hour Season 2, you should probably get on that or inquire and see what's up. Uh, just back from Texas, was at an awesome event last night, the Million Dollar Mastermind, uh, seeing Uncle Ed Milet speak and, and doing dinner with some really good friends. And life is great because of all the things that Ken was just talking about because I am in alignment with my true self uh, and I'm exploring and, and making an impact and contributing the best way that I know how because I am lit up. Uh, and this is a high that you just can't buy, is to be high on life. And if you're not there, um, try to identify what does make you happy, what you're really good at and so forth and lean into that. I can honestly say I've lived more in the last year and a half than I have in the last 35 years combined. That's some pretty deep stuff. The good news is and why that's applicable for all of you guys. If you're not 100% happy right now, all it takes is a moment and an instant to commit and say, I know I'm here for something more. I know I am unique. I know I am special. Uh, Katya, thank you so much. Uh, and it's just good to see everybody out here today. Um, so from the bottom of my heart, love you guys. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week, uh, episode 64. Uh, so there's that. Have an unbelievable weekend, guys. Sharpen the axe. Uh, think big. Real big.